Over the last couple of weeks, I've been focusing on fleshing out the mechanics, improving the quality of the code, and building a foundation to make further development go more quickly and easily. Also, new cards. One thing that has changed is rather than just click to use a, a card, you pick it up. You can either pick it up with click, or you can drag it. And, you know, it's just a, what is the launcher launch? Well, I'm glad you asked. Missile, pew. So, here's what I've been working on. I've tried to make a system for cards and actions that should be flexible enough for all the kinds of interactions I'd like to add. Each card can perform one or more actions, such as the double shot doing the laser action twice, and each action can have multiple elements, such as the overloaded shot, which does damage to the enemy and the player. All of these are specified using scriptable objects. Scriptable objects are perhaps the worst named thing in Unity. It sounds so generic, like surely any object can have a script on it. But no, it's something completely different. Essentially, they're used like entries in a database. Using this system, it's a simple matter to create new cards and actions and link them together. I was struggling a bit with how to represent the action elements in a nice readable way, but thankfully, I got some help from the chat in coming up with a way. Previously, I was representing this with two separate arrays, one for the action elements and one for the the magnitude, but uh, Judge Groovy Man actually uh, showed me a way to do this uh, with, I think, serialization which is something I didn't really get too much into, but it's just a simple way to allow this to be represented. So, so for example, we have here the missile action. If I wanted, and what it does, it does five direct damage to the enemy and removes the card, removes the card that it's from. I'm a ghost ship, yeah. So I could, I could easily just add another action here. So let's say I wanted, for some reason, it to draw a card, I just do that. And then that's what missile does for now. Making a robust and, and uh, flexible system really helps in, in, in speeding up development time once you've, got, once you've got going. That's one of the great things about doing development on stream. Many of the viewers are coders and they often have lots of useful suggestions. Also, I resolved the problem I mentioned in the previous devlog where enemy and player actions were completely separated because enemy and player actions have entirely different animations. So we have laser action and enemy shot. They're the same thing except the animation is different. It would be nice to be able to sort of set the animator depending on who the target is, maybe that's a better way to do it. Th so the action is not tied to who's doing the shooting. To make it possible to reuse the same action for both, I created dictionaries, which are kind of like lists that look up which animation belongs to which action, depending on whether it is the player or the enemy's turn. Dictionary, if you're not familiar with the programming concept, is like a list which has keys and values, like a dictionary in that you, oh, I know, I need this, I need to look up this thing and find out what it means, essentially. So you'd look up, say, the action, and that would be associated with an animation. There would be two dictionaries. There'd be one for player actions and animations, and one for enemy actions and animations. In the player animation difference dictionary, looking up laser gets player laser. In the enemy action dictionary, looking up laser gets enemy laser, right? Let's try a regular shot, and now hopefully it does. It works. Yes. Okay, we just need to make sure these work. Yes, and then fire your lasers, you dickhead. Stop doing that. <sighs> Wait, did I? Is it only? Go this is the problem with randomness. You can't tell. There, it did. It fired. Okay. <laughs> I've made my own animator class. Unity Zone is really meant for 3D animation, and I found it quite clunky and difficult to use for my purposes. Having to use this system slowed me down a lot when I was making Guildmaster. What I've created here is quite simple, but it works and makes it easy to create new animations. The Unity animator is uh, a mess. For 2D animation, it's overcomplicated and it's a lot of cumbersome silliness. So I've made my own animator. It simply takes in a list of frames, does some time elapsed stuff in the in the update, just counts time and then increments frames, refreshes the sprite. So it doesn't have support for frames with different speeds i could add that later but it's just it's as simple as it needs to be the basics of weapon systems are now in place each weapon system has a number of associated cards that get added to your deck by having the weapon on your ship once shields are down the weapons start to take damage once a weapon is destroyed the cards associated with that weapon become unplayable this will be expanded to other systems like engines it says here deal two dam energy damage weapon is destroyed so we can't play it so i'm I'm wondering whether this is the right way to handle it or if it should actually remove the cards from your deck until you repair them. But it's also kind of uh, a potentially worthwhile mechanic for it to actually stay in the hand because it's like a dead card and it's like this is a disincentive for letting your weapons get destroyed. Whereas if you just discarded them, then you'd have two other things here 
that you could use instead of... Uh, so it wouldn't be as much of a penalty, so that'll be a matter of balance. As your systems get damaged or destroyed, your deck will suffer. Preventing systems from being damaged and repairing them will be essential to victory. Right now, the enemy is rather uninteresting, and so the gameplay is kind of dull. So, the next task will be to flesh out the enemy behaviour and give the player more meaningful options. One way of doing this is by having some actions that aren't instant. Either a projectile that takes some time to reach the target, or an energy weapon being charged up. This gives the player the opportunity to take action to prevent this, either by taking evasive action, trying to shoot down the incoming projectile, or destroying the enemy weapon before it can fire. Evasive, so evasive maneuvers would be worth doing if you knew the enemy was charging up a powerful attack. And it would also be worth, say, let's say we could try to take out their weapons before they fire. It could be all kinds of uh, ways to deal with it, depending on what cards you happen to have. Thank you for watching these devlogs, and let me know if there's anything you'd like me to go into more detail about in later parts. If you'd like to support what I'm doing, check out my Patreon. And if you'd like to join the streams, they're at 6pm BST every Thursday on Twitch. See you next time.